Check two, one, two. Uh. Welcome back, everyone. This is the show Graduated. My name is Monica, and I'm sitting here with my very beautiful friend. This is yes. Micah. Micah's a friend of mine. We met through Kyle, our friend who I used to work with at Michael Kors ages ago. Ages ago. Ages. And then we've been friends for a couple of years now, and I love you. Yepers. And yeah, you just have like this energy that's just so like family. Like you're just like family. You're just like a cousin. I feel like you're my cousin. <laughs> That's um, what all the natives say anyway. Oh, oh cousin. <laughs> cousin, cousin! Even though Monica's the whitest chick around. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, whatever. Fuck yeah, cousin. I love it. Um, okay, so we were going to drink beer, but I don't feel like it. So we're just not today. Um, so I want to get to know Micah. I already know you, but I think that other people need to know, like, where did you grow up? Like, let's start at the beginning. Because I want to talk about, like, your kind of situation now, but I feel like Let's talk about the beginning first. So are we talking like embryo or we're we talking like, yeah, you know, like, kindergarten? Yeah, like let's do like <laughs> embryo. Let's talk about fertilization <laughs> and then we'll go. Well, I think I was conceived birth. in Dawson City where the Klondike was. Oh. No. <laughs> it's your oldest fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I didn't say when the Klondike yeah. was happening, bitch. I said where it happened. Okay. <laughs> let's mm. get that straight. Mm. Mm. Sure. Okay, hon. Okay, but um, no, Serious. I'm originally from the Yukon, so I was born and raised half and half in Whitehorse, Yukon, and also Vancouver. So um, my mother raised me in Whitehorse mm-hmm. and Vancouver because she was going back and forth through school. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so what I think she I... she in school? Um, she was going to school. She went to school. She was the first female justice of the peace in the Yukon. Fuck and yes. then she came down to Vancouver and she went to school down here to become a life skills coach. Oh my God. So she went, um, she went to life skills coaching school down here. Oh. So she did that for a couple of years. And then she taught actually life skills on one of the reserves out in Musqueam. Um, near the golf course out there. So even to this day, I run into people. They're like, oh my God, are you J.C. Fox's son? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, I remember when you were a little kid playing around our classroom and she was like teaching us. And like, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So it's funny. But it's cool that you, like your parent, one of your parents, like like has such an impact on people and has taught them. Yeah. And so that was pretty phenomenal. But yeah, so my mom um, raised me half in Whitehorse and half in Vancouver. So mm-hmm. that was pretty cool. I felt like growing up in the Yukon and being like First Nation and being in like an urban setting in Whitehorse. And it's 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 a small town. It's like 26,000. Yeah. But our community, our, our our subdivision was like, you know, five minutes outside of town. It's like right in the, in the area of town. Mm-hmm. And um, we grew up like kind of like a, I would say like an urban lifestyle but also a traditional lifestyle like we'd get out of school early like in May till a month early to go like hunting and fishing and you know gathering medicine and all that kind of stuff so I'd be like this little dude like rolling out in the fucking fish camp with my mom and <laughs> my grandma and all my cousins and everything yeah and they'd be like hunting for moose and they'd, they'd be like you know going going um catching fish and we'd be going collecting berries and I'd ride horses like oh my god it was like Love Indian it. slash Mowgli running up in there <laughs> So it was a lot of fun growing up. And then we moved down to that. Vancouver mm-hmm. and uh, when I was seven till I was 15 and then being immersed into like a Vancouver, mm-hmm. it's ironic that this, so um, city. that this studio is in, um, East Vancouver off of like East Hastings, like yeah. the upper East Hastings. I went to school across the street at Stop McDonald, it. at McDonald, at McDonald elementary oh my God. when I first came here yeah. because in this area, there's lots of first nation housing in this area. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So it's kind of like interesting how that all panned out. But yeah, so I grew up half in Vancouver and half in Whitehorse. And I think I got a really good mix of traditional first nation lifestyle and also a really good mix of like the urban native. So mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you mix of both. True enough. Love it. I love that. So and that was my younger like, years. Younger years. Mm-hmm. My young Micah. Just so flying definitely. around. <laughs> I love that you were in your mom's classroom. Like, I can only imagine how distracting you would be. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I was probably asking a million little questions. And she probably, probably. Just, like, basically probably, like, locked me in a closet. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh just God. shut me up. <laughs> it's like, Mike, get I out of here. She's like, get out of I here. I can see that. She, like, <laughs> pushes me in the broom closet. Yeah, it's like, seriously, get out of here. Um. Okay, I love that. So that's, like beginning um so then I guess because your mom went to school and you kind of saw your mom going to school like is that what made you go to university like 
did you always plan on that or like um, my how mom, did that start? She was pretty like she was pretty a driving force behind me going to university. Yeah. But I think prior to that, like I grew up like when I was going to high school. Um, I finished my high school in the Yukon and I was obviously like a very well-spoken individual. I was mm-hmm. a very involved in my first nation community, involved in my community as a whole, Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal. And, um, so I sat on so many councils and committees since I was like 12 till I was like, in my like 20, till I was like 25. Like I was on the Yukon education council reviewing oh the God. Yukon education system. Like when I was in grade 11, I was on the RCMP M division, um, youth council. So I was a youth representative on the RCMP M division oh my God. board. Um, yeah, so all those kind of things. So growing up in high school, I was really motivated to be like, you know, advocacy for First Nation youth, advocacy yeah. for youth in general. So I was really um, keen on that, and I really wanted to take part in that. And like, I had a strong voice. I knew how to articulate myself very well. Mm-hmm. But I could also really listen to other people's perspectives and their opinions, and then I would take that forward for them because a lot of people have a lot to say, and they really want to say it, but they may not have the voice or the courage to do so. So then I took it on on part of myself to go ahead and do that. So all throughout high school, I played that kind of role, which was really great for me because it helped me come out of my shell. Yeah. Because in elementary, I was super, super shy. Yeah. But in high school, I started to become out because I was starting to find my voice and be a little bit more well-spoken. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So that really helped me. And then um, I got scholarships through, um, throughout high school. Of course I won- you did. I mean, I that a- resume, like... Yeah. Full resume will be posted <laughs> online. Yeah, could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Along with the headshot, my phone number, yeah. friend, you're like, you know, Heidi's out there. <laughs> Let's keep it 100. It commercials only. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we don't have much time. Weekend booking. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no. Uh, so, high school was great in that aspect. And yeah, I also did a, I did a one-month really... exchange in high school as well. I went over to mm-hmm. France for a month. Oh, and then we cool. did, like, um, an exchange over there. So, that was pretty cool yeah. in, in grade 12. So, that was like, I was like, you know what? I really love this aspect of learning mm-hmm. abroad. Yeah. So when I got back home, I was like, you know what? I want to kind of apply to universities, yeah. all that kind of jazz. I took some courses at the Yukon College up there for the summer. Mm-hmm. So I did that just to kind of like get used to the kind of like yeah, the academic like the stream. Yeah, like Because I feel like when you're like 18, 19, when you, you just roll out of high school. High school was like, like you have s- teachers that are totally yeah. like telling you what to do. Yeah. When you go to your college university, okay, you sink or swim. Like, you do it yourself and yeah. if you don't do it, then you're screwed. Like, teach yourself everything. 100%. You're going to have a great prof. Like, go and rate my prof.com. Yeah, they're great, but like, it's really you. Oh, 100%. <laughs> you're 100% And like, And like, and like if you shit. are really like a good student they could see value in you, they'll yeah. let you know, but it's still oh, all, sure. it's still all you. Yeah. But they like, they'll encourage you. So when yeah. I went to UConn College, like, oh my God, like you should apply for this, this and that. Yeah. So I ended up applying for like UBC because yeah. at that time, my godfather was a Supreme Court judge in the UConn. Okay. And a couple of my other family members were lawyers. Yeah. And my mom really wanted me to get into law. So of yeah. course, you know, you're young and impressionable. You're like, okay, I'll go into yeah. law well, for you. Well, I mean, you. it's nice that she had like... <clears throat> such like a good I mean that's a great path to go on for sure I mean, and that's like really high for sure and I totally too. understand where she's coming from because mm-hmm. if you're a lawyer you don't have to be a lawyer but that is such a transferable skill is, in any yeah. other uh, job, job facet yeah so um you'd be a killer lawyer uh, I'm hey girl there's still time <laughs> <laughs> just legally blind oh, <laughs> yeah oh my god let's go to law school oh my god right on yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, I was um, did my first um, <laughs> um, summer at UConn College, and I was like, okay, I'm applying to universities. So yeah. I applied to UBC, Dalhousie, and UVic, because they all have amazing law programs. Yeah. I was assuming I was going to go into law. Yeah. So I got into all three, and I was like, I think I want to go to Dalhousie. Like, it's over the maritime, Ooh, yeah, something yeah, yeah. fun and totally different. Yeah. And then my mom's like, oh, it's too far. We're not going to be able to visit you, and blah, blah, so blah. So true, And though. I was like, that and matters. I'm really close with her, and I'm really close yeah. with my family. Like, I we're know. very, very tight knit. So I was like, oh, okay, mom. like, you know, I won't go there. And I was like, well, what about Vancouver? I'm like, I love this city like I love the like blah 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 this blah blah that and she was like you've already been there why don't you try something new I'm like oh my god well fuck why didn't you yeah. just tell me to go to UVic if yeah. I like I gave you all these choices to like pick with me but anyway yeah. so she's like just go check out UVic she's like I think you'll be good there yeah. and I think for me like being like 18 19 coming out of the Yukon and like going to university she didn't want me to be immersed in Vancouver by myself and um so she was like victoria will be a little more safer for me Mm -hmm. and also when i remember like because like i'm two-spirited so in the first nation community that means like you're gay so like in i guess in like in the non-indigenous terms like in Mm -hmm. our terms it's two-spirited like we have a male and a female spirit within our body yeah but when um that's a whole other topic yeah and uh when i was moving down (laughs) to when i was exactly when i was moving down to victoria Mm -hmm. i was 19 and i was i told my mom like oh i'm two-spirited i'm gay and i'm moving to victoria and she's like oh my god like what the hell so it was amazing moving down to victoria because i was like coming to like terms with my sexuality and who i was but Mm -hmm. i was also like packed up in a little teeny like 
little teeny truck with my best friend and we're like I doing a road it. trip from the Yukon to Victoria because she was going to school too and like I was like I, I entered into a biological psychology degree in my first year and like I was going through that whole phase in my life which was like pretty intense to be like so young coming so out of a community. So much transition exactly and, like, coming you know <clears throat> coming of age like really. For sure. All wrapped up. I should have a movie written about me. Oh my god. <laughs> like and that's not even the juicy stuff yet. No. <laughs> But yeah, so no, you. UVic. UVic was the first university I attended. Okay. So that was pretty amazing. Because but you didn't do your whole degree there. No. So I did my first year at year. UVic. Okay. And um, I liked it. Did but you like Victoria? I liked. Well, Victoria is a Victoria is like a beautiful city. Yeah. But for me, I like it, because but... like <clears throat> I think because I was coming into a transition into like you know trying to check out the gay scene and see mm-hmm. whatever what all that was about. Yeah. Victoria really doesn't have that scene. It's yeah. so small. I've heard so, there's one gay bar. Yeah, paparazzi, and it's like <laughs> is rat, it still there? It's like I don't know it, it's it's interesting let's put okay. it that way i'm not yeah. gonna throw no shade on victoria yeah, yeah, yeah. no shade Vic. yeah, you, no shade. you got what you got boo-boos yeah. i'm sure you're making it work i'm sure yeah. you're making it work but yeah so yeah. at that time i was like uh-uh paparazzi ain't my yeah. fucking that ain't my deal so i was on the ferry going over to vancouver all the time hanging oh my out God, with my friends that. having such a great time mm-hmm. so i'm like i need to like get back to the mainland so after yeah. my first year <clears throat> I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a break. I like, I was still volunteering. I was on the Assembly of First Nations National Youth Council. Mm-hmm. So I was doing that for a while. Mm-hmm. And um, I went back to the Yukon for a year and yeah. helped out my mom and like family members and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. And just to spend some time with my family. And then I came back down to Vancouver and I was like, okay, I'm ready for school again. Yeah. What do I want to so do? Where do I want? Yeah. Where do I want okay. to go? And I was like, okay, well, I... I I didn't really like the whole, like, theoretical aspect of, like, theory mm-hmm. in university. Like, I want more practical, technical skills. Yeah. So, like, I was looking at UBC again. And I was like, do I really want to go to a massive school like that? I want more yeah. structured and smaller class sizes. Yeah. So, I was looking at BCIT and a couple other schools. But I, I settled on BCIT because I had a friend who went there. She already graduated from SFU. She couldn't find a job. And she um, did her a diploma at, at BCIT. Mm-hmm. And she was immediately hired right after because they have such practical, technical skills. Yeah, especially as an after degree for as well, sure. and even your first degree, like the BCIT <clears throat> is like a good success rate. Like and they are, and they're the the programs there are like it's intense. It's so, specific. It's so intense. Like so intense. I never worked so like, freaking hard in my life. Yeah, I was there. Like you're in group settings and lots of group work, so you really know how to work with other individuals yeah. and know how to like you know compromise. Yeah, and you know how to delegate, and you also know how to like you know lead. Yeah. If you are if you are that kind of like you know if that kind of like if you're an extrovert to a certain extent mm-hmm. or you have a like leadership qualities yeah. BCIT really hones that yeah. so then I went to BCIT I, I did a marketing um a marketing diploma in entrepreneurship there yeah and I loved it and so I was like you know what I'm just gonna finish it here and just finish like my BBA my bachelor's of business administration so I finished that and then I applied for um I applied for an exchange program to yeah. finish like my last like six my last semester in uh, France. So I went to Paris. I love it. And I finished my last semester so there. So you chose France again mm. because you went there before, right? In high school. Yeah, I went there before in high school, but also oh sorry, like uh, interlude. I also went to school for fashion. So okay. I did a couple semesters of uh, fashion design program at Where? LaSalle International College of Design. Okay. Downtown here on Pender Street. Oh, okay. So okay. I was always interested in fashion. So yeah. I had kind of like a double edge like like motivation to go to Paris mm-hmm. because I really wanted to see like what the hype of the cap and fat like the sort of the fashion capital of the world was yeah so I wanted sure. to go there and I was like always Beautiful. I've always wanted to do and I've I have my lookbook I have my designs drawn up ever since like since I can remember and I still I still add to them all the time so I was like you know what I have my designs all that kind of jazz I'm gonna have my business degree like I can make something work in the next yeah. couple of years you know what I mean so like that was like you know like kind of like a passion project I wanted to do yeah so yeah no uh, living in Paris was phenomenal I had like a two-bedroom condo in like the third arrondissement right downtown central I was like a couple blocks from the Louvre Bonjour. Like, oh exactly like girl Bonjour, it was mon ami. it was amazing Bonjour, Avec moi, ça oh. yeah <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was. No, it was a blast. Yeah, it was a blast though. Like living in Paris, and I was an international business program. Mm -hmm. I had like fifty other students from all over the world. We all spoke English. Like, oh my god, I don't know any French. Yeah, and I was going there. I'm like, whatever. Like, I'm gonna wing it. Except the keywords. Yeah, exactly. Keywords, key phrases for sure. And you know what? I had Google Translate, so that bitch like hooked me up. Honestly, yeah, saves lives. Oh, one hundred percent. Okay, okay. But yes, Paris was amazing, and I finished my degree there, and I was like super fortunate to get scholarships there. Yeah. So you. That wasn't like out of pocket. You got 
Uh, well, it was, cause Paris was so expensive, oh my God. like yeah, insane. I know. I'm like, so how it was do you a spend it that? was a mix of student loans and scholarships. Okay, I wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't have been able to uh, go if I didn't get all those scholarships as well. Yeah. And I one thing I have to mention sidebar while I was going through school this whole period of like whatever four years, mm-hmm. I was also raising my 15 year old sister by myself. Oh my so God. I also had to pay for her and all that kind of jazz. So that's what nice. really helped out. So how were you? Were you working during school too? No, I was relying on. I was relying on student loans and scholarships yeah. while I was going through school. Wow. And then I was working all these, like, I got really amazing jobs every summer, like, yeah. high-paying jobs that were, were really, like, um, like, well, really, I mean, your like, resume. That really pulled me out of <laughs> yeah. the, you know, out of the, I would say, financial struggle to a certain extent. Yeah, but I still good. have, like, huge student loan debt right now that I'm still paying off Preach. to this day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's everyone. But, yeah, so it was, but... it was, it was good for me to, like, you know, Definitely applied yeah. to as many scholarships as I could. Yeah. And I put my best foot much forward. Help as possible. And talk to people. Go out there. Go to your centers and go to your, like, if you have a counselor who's, like, willing to, like, you know, help you out with, like, applying mm-hmm. for scholarships, et cetera, like, go for it. I, yeah. I did them all. And yeah. you know what? Some people don't apply for them. And so you get, you end up getting them. Yeah. Or oh, it was a very, very few that applied for it or this or that. But you just, like, make sure that you shine the brightest. Yeah. That's the one thing that I really wish I did more of in university was, like, actually look at scholarships. Because mm-hmm. I didn't even, like, I was just working, like, had my head down. I didn't, I didn't know shit about university. So, like, good for you for using your resources. For sure. Well, my first so... year, I didn't know anything. And then yeah. my second and third and fourth, I'm like, no way. Like, Bitch, I need I'm some... paying for this shit. I know. I'm like, I'm living in <laughs> Vancouver. This shit is expensive. I'm raising a child yeah. by myself. I was, <laughs> Single like, mother. I was like, mama needs some cash. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, writing those letters. Yeah. <laughs> One evening, a letter. One 100%. letter evening. I love it. Um, okay, so, I don't know. Like, knowing what you know now. Actually, no, let's save that for later. Okay, so now current. Mm-hmm. So that was the school. When did you graduate? When did you finish your last little bit um, of schooling? Well, 2015. Okay. Or 2014. Okay. So four so years ago. Four years ago, yeah. Because yeah. it's 2018 now. Yeah. 2018 is a good year, first of all. But um, I just find, find that this has been a good year for me. But anyway. Um, okay, so what do you do for fun? What's fun? You live in the West End. You just moved. Well, a couple I used months to, ago. Yeah, for sure. I used to have this big five bedroom Kyle's house. Kyle's old place, ironically. <laughs> I love that shit. It's, it's so full funny. Circle, full circle, full circle. Full circle. You would never know by looking at it now, though. No, no, way. it's micified. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I um I moved to the West End it's in fluffy. August. It's fluffy. It's fluffy. It's, it's all... literally fluffy. It's, it's like there's fluffy spaces everywhere. Shirley wool. Shirley wool. Yeah, everywhere. Shirley wool. <laughs> if you have any allergies to fur, like yeah. do not go near. You'll just. I'm like, yeah. Um, Your PETA, throat will close don't, up, like, honey. Yeah, don't kill me. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no almonds. There's no oh, almonds yeah, anywhere. Yeah, but no there's fur. There's fur everywhere. Carpets. Oh my gosh, like, so funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I did move to the West End in August. Before that, I had like a five bedroom house in East Van, yes. which was amazing because like when I was raising my little sister, I needed a place for her as well. Yeah. And I rented out three bedrooms. So mm. also, if you're going to school, be really smart about it. If you're looking yeah. for housing, like get a big house if you can swing it by yourself, and then rent out rooms by your, and rent out rooms to other people. Yeah. And then kind of like supplement your income that way. That's how I got through school too. Because like. My God, like, you're so resourceful in that way. Like, I respect that so much. Like, when I didn't even think about that, like, mm-hmm. how did you even know to do that? I was, like, honestly, like, I've all, ever since I was a kid, I've always had, like, a little bit of a business mind. And, like, yeah. what can I do that'll make this situation work smarter, not harder? Yeah. I don't mind hard work, but if I can work smarter, then that's a little bit easier to do. You know what I mean? So, yeah. when I got into this place, it was a five-bedroom. I'm, like, I can swing this first month's rent by myself. Yeah. And I make it look really good on the resume, on, on my application. And then I'm going to, like, you know what? Sub these three rooms and that's yeah. what I did right from the get-go and that like supplemented my income all throughout oh God, all throughout that. my university years and yeah. I end up staying there after yeah, until I basically got reno evicted because of the market is so insane in Vancouver yeah no okay. kidding so but anyways but now I have like this amazing little one bedroom oh God, right off it. of Davy, uh, like in the, the west balcony. end yeah it's so gorgeous it's and it's so, so gorgeous. central and like literally two blocks from the beach yeah two so, blocks every, it's two blocks from everything really except 100%. me it's like five blocks from me I know it's all five blocks it's so hard to yell town but no I love it though and it was good like now yeah. I have like and the other place it was so huge I already had my own space but this is like oh my mind yeah so you like, deserve it and, and like, I like and I honestly like everything's decorated the way I want it yes. everything's so super cute inside there so like good. I have family coming into town all the time so yeah. they're always staying with me I swear to god my mom's like fucking been down in the last like three yeah. months like a month and a half yeah I She's love hilarious. It. I know. No, I love her. You and you guys in your little for resort. Sure. And it's super cute though. And I love, and like, you know what? I love having people over and like my house is like meant for like my little place is like, it's small, it's but perfect, but though. it's a good size for like yeah. hosting dinner parties and having people over. Like I enjoy that. I can attest that that's true. True enough. You true can do a fact. dinner party or two. A couple. For sure. You know, anytime the there's moose, the I'm fucking there. <laughs> 
at each other. And this, I'm the, what, the, the blonde girl that oh eats a lot? Oh, my, mom, oh my God. So anyway, so sidebar people. So yeah. my mom loves to cook. So I had that five-bedroom house. I had this massive kitchen. She cooked all these meat dishes. Like, she cooked moose and salmon and all these other fixings. Every type of meat you can imagine was cooked. It was amazing. cooked. And she would, like, on slave the all the night before and then all the day. And I had, like, 30 friends over eating in my big-ass house. But now I'm in a smaller house. And, like, I have, like, a dinner table in there that expands out. So I had, like, 12 people over. So we made, like food and all that kind of jazz and I remember I invited Monica over again and we're eating blah 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 and then I was like oh we have to wait for Monica my mom's like who's Monica I'm like oh she's like my friend blah blah she works at Michael Kors and then I think Kyle was like oh she's like the white girl and my mom's like oh that one that white girl that pretty white girl who eats a lot (laughs) (laughs) which I love and when we're we're just joking around because we're friends we we don't mean any anything by calling people like white or Indian or all that it's just how we talk together because we're little besties and we're good to go like that it's true love for sure true love but yeah so that's how my mom refers to her but she loves her unconditionally I know and I love that shit I'm like yeah I'm like that's probably like the best way to describe me ever like you could pick me out of a crowd with that oh yeah like who's that tall blonde girl for sure who eats a lot but but at the same time though people i know we're not on tv so you can only like hear our voices but she <laughs> still looks stunning though and she's like fit af so oh shit you she can handle me? it <laughs> you better be talking about me she can handle and moose is lean lean this is my girl. show you better be talking about <laughs> me um okay let's talk about your work right now because sure, sure. you have a cool job yeah, so I work so, for, so I'm an event planning coordinator for a yes. large firm downtown. Are you in your field? Like, I know we graduate with a field. Like, are you in your field? Well, ironically, in the summers, I worked as an event planner. Yeah. And so I have a business degree, which is super transferable to anything. Oh, for sure. So I feel like for now, I'm in my field that I, that I feel like it was easy for me to transition into mm-hmm. because I did it in the summers before that. And I kind of worked off the side of my desk doing this kind of work before, but now that I have a business degree and now I work for an actual firm downtown. You're legit. So you for sure legit. Yeah. And I, I, I like plan huge events from like 900 people down to like 50 people. You know what I mean? Like I have this huge conference that's happening next month, which oh I have God. 750 people coming from all wow. over BC down to Vancouver. This huge like conference where it's like, you know, days, a couple days of workshops, mm-hmm. you know, like um, panel discussions, yeah. like all these amazing like professionals from all over BC are coming for this conference. So I feel like right now I'm in the field that I'm supposed to be in, mm-hmm. but I feel like whatever you take in university, you are not going to know what you're going to get into after. So oh, don't feel sure. discouraged if you're not in what yeah. you think you should be yeah, in no, no. because the world has a funny way of like turning out the way you want it. And you know yeah. what? Jump on this opportunity. I'm on this opportunity. It's not to say in one year I'm going to be somewhere else. Yeah. I never believe, I don't believe in like the mm-hmm. end up thing. Like I think for that's sure. kind of weird. For sure. And like I think, you know, what? we're masters of our own destiny. So you, it's yeah. all about timing. Like for if, sure. If you get a, you like get a this, chance this pops to up, like do it. try a different job and you've been there for a year or two years mm-hmm. and you got those skills, as long as you stay at the job for a year, I feel that's a good amount of time. It shows on your record that you're committed. You're not just like, you know, flighty. Yeah. Then transfer somewhere else and go totally. do something else. But yeah, for now, I feel like I'm in the position that I'm supposed to be in. Yeah. But you never know what's going to happen in a year. Like I always keep my options open and I'm always receptive to like, you know, new job opportunities. Yeah. I love that. So right now you're educating directly impacted your job like I guess you kind of explained that already but like what skills did you learn in school that like you use daily or like is there anything um, we sure. learned like negotiation and sales which is oh my god that's which is so paramount important. yeah when everyone I'm trying, should, when I'm you trying should to learn book. that in high school exactly like, I need to learn that 100 percent yeah um, so I learned so we had those skills right off from the get-go like when you're negotiating contracts with venues when you're yeah. trying to book conference centers you're trying to negotiate the best price so learning mm. how to negotiate that and put your best foot forward so I think like, those, I like that. those skills really came came into um um, came into play with the event planning and yeah. I feel like a lot of the um, we did communications we did leadership skills those come in like when I go into an event and I have um, 15 or 20 people working under me learning how to delegate individuals when I'm in VCIT yes, we were, delegation exactly, when we're in VCIT it was all lots of group settings so I learned how to do that so mm-hmm. I learned how to delegate so when yeah. I'm in that setting well, like I'm on site I'm on the ground and I'm like you know everyone's looking to me to like okay you go over here man this you man reception mm-hmm. make sure AB is good to go etc yeah. etc we all play our part mm-hmm. you, so when you learn how to delegate that in an appropriate and efficient way I think it's like it really helps you yeah and having a solid team that's like motivated 100% and, likes being and as long as and as long as you keep them motivated as well yeah. keep them motivated and keep them on task yeah. And even though if you're tired AF, but you just like, you know what? Like, have that pep in your step. Eat a banana. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I have a banana right here. Yeah, folks. he does. Yeah, he, literally. Um, 
like yeah that was like so the fruit. funny but um, um <laughs> i also but also like we did uh, accounting and finance which is re- yeah. that was re- very relevant when you're looking over the invoicing well i mean Calcula- when tax season rolls around oh 100 percent. calculating everything and looking at all the invoices if i'm i'm dealing with hundreds of thousands of dollars at a time I and bet. sometimes like you know oh they double charge us for a huge lcd screen when i'm like it was sixty seven thousand dollars i'm like it's really supposed to be like you know 33 33 000. like how come it's this and like you know right. like you catch those kind of things so yeah. i think those kind of like bookkeeping. Courses really, really helped you. Oh for, God, sure. for sure. For sure. Okay, that's that's really interesting. Um, so I wanted to go a little bit political, just mildly. Um, so with Trudeau's government, you know, they got elected on the basis like, oh, we're gonna put so much more funding into like First Nations health and especially with education and things like that. And since you're so close with the community and you're part of the community, and that's kind of your circle and a lot of your energy goes there. Um, I'm just wondering, like, have you noticed any differences in the past couple of years, like with funding of mm-hmm. like, if anything has kind of improved or like, I think I can't really speak to like, I don't if know the, if the amounts of funding noticed. have really like increased or decreased, yeah. but I know that the general consensus of moving from a conservative based political system that we yeah. had in power who were very rigid when it came to first nation indigenous people reconciliation, yeah. they weren't proactive. Mm-hmm. They were more reactive and they kind of wanted to push that aside and not really deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, where we had the new liberal government where we have, um, uh, Jody Raywell Wilson, who's works in the justice field and like such amazing people who are First Nation, who are a part of the liberal government now. Right. I think those are, it's a pinnacle moment for our people, pinnacle moment for Indigenous people, not just Indigenous people, but for non-Indigenous people, because we're all people of Canada and we should be reconciled with each other. And the First Nation Indigenous people should be reconciled with the government and be recognized mm-hmm. um, as Indigenous peoples of this land. So I do think that the relationship has definitely gotten way stronger with, um, with a Liberal government in power. And I think that really gives First Nation communities that are impoverished, that are um, really wanting um, a voice out there. Yeah. It gives them a little bit a more courage line. to yeah. speak up and speak out and have their voices heard by a receptive government that will hear their outcries of outcries of there's huge suicide rates in First Nation communities. Yeah. There's huge, you know, drug and alcohol rates out there. Like there's there's a lot of things that are really happening in our communities, yeah. like diabetes and heart disease mm-hmm. and like all these things which really affect our community that really need a voice. And I think now with a new political structure out there that's more receptive, they're more inclined to let them know what's going on in their communities. And what's really great about the First Nation Health Authority, it's a precedent setting organization in all of Canada, where a First Nation entity is looking after healthcare programs and services that are being administered to over 200 First Nations within BC. So that in itself is like precedent setting and phenomenal. Yeah. So I think um, the Liberal government definitely played a huge part in helping that come to fruition Mm -hmm. and keeping that going, which I think is, which I think is beautiful. I think so too. For sure. Beautiful. I love that. Beautiful. Positivity. 100%. I want to know too, like, do you consider, I mean, okay, so you talked about fashion a little bit. That's more like your creative, Mm -hmm. inspirational side. For sure. Um, What inspires you and like what provokes innovation for for you and like what are perfect conditions and inspiring, beautiful day? Like you, okay, I'm going to go on a little side note here. You have the best Instagram and social media because you just post you as a selfie spinning around in nature, <laughs> literally saying, oh my God, look at how beautiful my day is. And it literally brightens my day with like a list of hashtags and all these amazing yeah. things. <laughs> so like I mean this in the most loving way like it's so corny but yeah. it's just so joyous and like it it makes me happy and like for sure and like, and, 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 like, an ever to follow and like, in that in, in that in that scenario too like I have so <laughs> many friends and family like all over like in the Yukon yeah. everywhere else and just those little moments on my story on Instagram I share it with them yeah. you know what I mean I love and it. I just want them to be a part of my life and yeah, like seriously I'm, never stop like I'm, I'm like the only one living down it. in Vancouver everyone else is spread all over and so you know what true. and they like like they tune in and I'm just like you know what like this is my day I miss you all and yeah. like funny goofy shit whatever's yeah. wrong on the day like I'm good 
to go. Or like, I have the longest Instagram posts of life. It's I like I write how I talk. I'm like a yeah. storyteller. Yeah. My Instagram posts are like I swear you to God, tell. like a page long. <laughs> yeah. And but I describe like and I, I love and, I, it. and I don't just post like one picture. I post at least ten. Yeah. On there. Always. And for sure. And it's just like of but, of all my friends. And I usually love to post the pictures of like me interacting with all my friends and these beautiful souls I have in my life. Aww. Like they should be celebrated. I agree. So sorry, that was our you sidebar. Yeah, but no, but inspiring. that's but I mean that is inspiring. And I think that there's so many people out there that like with social media, they really try and put up a front of like, oh, like I want to look cooler, like only put up the best photo, best angle of me or whatever, and they don't feel that just anything of just them being happy, like doing something that's kind of silly and funny sure. and quirky is gonna be like loved just as much. And as- I feel like I feel like our society is way too like image conscious that's a yeah, nice way of filter it. like every way so... too image conscious like we all have to yeah. be perfect like screw i'm guilty that. of it oh for sure me I too am. like you look at my photos like i'm not saying i look amazing in all of them but like you know what sometimes like you you want to like you know what okay put a filter on there i want to look extra cute today etc yeah. etc yeah. and that's good like you know what celebrate yourself and celebrate your beauty mm-hmm. but at the same time too like if you're feeling frumpy one day and you still want to snap a photo of yourself doing something fun, wild, crazy, whatever, go ahead and do it because those individuals who look at your Instagram, like, you know, they're there for a reason. Yeah. For sure. And they want to know what you're doing and they want to know that you're happy and that you're, you're good. For sure. No, I I agree 100%. What's that one, what's that one saying? It's like, um, it's like the people... The people it's like the people who the people who don't mind don't care. Or I can't remember. Anyways, the people who don't mind don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I'm new like, one. I'm like I'm like I'm sure the if people... you Google something like that, what <laughs> oh, I just yeah. said, you'll find that quote. Google the first words. Yeah. If you don't mind, you don't it's, care. It was basically along along the lines of like you know I what, all your that. friends they don't mind, and the people who who do mind, you don't care about them, and okay. you shouldn't. You okay, know what I mean? that makes more sense. And it's a reality. <laughs> Yeah. I totally mind. butchered that yeah. quote, by the way. I was Whatever. Like, I, was I think like, something better came out of it. <laughs> yeah. If you don't mind, you don't care. Once she edits the shit out of this, uh, I'll like, we'll do a, like, a little voiceover and I'll yeah. throw that in there. <laughs> just, just one quiet thing. Being, if 100%. you don't mind, you don't care. Like, but one song. of the questions, or sorry, you, uh, you said about being inspired before. Yeah. Like, obviously, like, that's social media. And that's just fun shits and giggles. I know. But what it, inspired, it inspires me. So. Oh, that's that's cute. I'm glad. <laughs> But what was, um, I think inspired me to really get into fashion back in the day yeah. was like, I was, I was partially raised by my grandmother as well. Mm-hmm. So my grandmother, uh, grew up in a time where, um, she didn't speak English. She didn't write English. So she was first nation. And, um, the only way she could really provide for her and her kids was to, um, traditionally sew moccasins and sew all these garments. So I grew up with her oh, sewing creative. coats and sewing okay. moccasins and sewing mitts and doing all these yeah. things. And when you're like a little kid and you're being raised by your grandmother, and she's sewing all the time Mm -hmm. it inspires you and this woman would sew these most intricate beautiful like um amazing coats with all these beatings all over it that were like, so floral and so beautiful and Indeed. she would sit there into the wee hours of like one in the morning and I'm like having to go to like school like great I was in grade four at the time and she like let me sit up and like watch her tell us like 1am she wouldn't like send me to bed and I would be like drawing and tracing all her like designs with her oh, wow. and I'd be like beating my own little beads and like I would like, literally be stringing I beads like she gave me the, the crappy bead box like it was yeah. like an old blue cooking container full yeah. of beads yeah. and I'd be like sticking my little needle through there with like all oh. my with my with my thread and I'd be making necklaces which were all multicolored and yeah. I thought it was the most beautiful thing ever well, and then until I was older out. she would show me how to do patterns so that it. was kind of amazing so that's where my inspiration really came from yeah. from like a fashion perspective and then when I was growing up, my older sister really wanted to do fashion, so that kind of got into it. And me, I've always loved to, like, dress up and look really cute. I was always really, like, well-dressed in high school. As soon as I, like, learned, like, when I turned 12 and I can go out and make some money, every summer I was out there making – I was making the dollars. Me too. I was making the coin. And, like, every every the summer – The minute I got a job – the minute I was like, Mom, when can I get a job? Like, exactly. that was my first question. Like, exactly. when can I start making money? I was the same way. And 12 as years as, old. And Boom. as soon as I was done, <laughs> yeah. like, I, I would, like, you know, work all summer, and then mm-hmm. I would take – and then when I was leaving the I'd take a one week down to Vancouver and I'd buy all my new clothes and I'd yep. purchase it all myself and buy like whatever. Oh. And I'd come back and everyone's like, oh my God, you're so city, you're so city. Because I, 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 I was like, I was partially raised in Vancouver and I wanted yeah. to look good. And I, I'm image conscious, like, but, but I also felt good about like making my own money and buying the things that make me feel good. Mm-hmm. And like when you're a kid, bitch, you ain't got no bills. Like yeah. you, your mom's <laughs> paying for everything. She's feeding you. I'm like, yeah. why don't you buy yourself, you know, whatever. Yeah. Buy yourself some new Scotty Pippen kicks yeah, back my in the day. Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> well, it was back in my day. Oh my god, so funny. But yeah, okay. but anyways, but yeah. So th- that's what inspired me for fashion design. Yeah, and I obviously love that. that inspired me for to pursue an educational background, mm-hmm. go into business. Was just like 
being a part of like such a strong family. My mom yeah. was like super motivated. I had so many different Your kinds of people is, in my life yeah, who were who were very like pioneers in the work that they did, and that mm-hmm. that really have helped fuel me. And just yeah. going through high school and being part of all these councils and committees and extracurricular activities, yeah, that was phenomenal. And they're all like, "Oh my God, you need to do something with yourself. You need to do this. You need to do that." So people were really like behind me and motivating yeah. me. So it hypes you up. So you too. knew you were capable of it. For you sure. Were like, for I'm sure. gonna do this. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do that. I'm gonna love and it. you know what? Like a lot when you're in high school and when you're in like university, like sometimes it's blind faith and sometimes it's stupid confidence yep. that puts you like pulls you above the rest. Yeah, it does. And, and you're just like, whatever. You're like, like just I might not know exactly what to do, but you know what? I'm yeah. gonna fucking jump in there and I'm gonna try it. Yeah. And you know what? I, you if it I doesn't swear, work, ninety percent well, of the time but... you end up killing it. Oh yeah. And if you don't kill it that ten percent, they don't even know. No. People still think you killed it anyway. For sure. It's just your own sense. One hundred percent failure that we all have at home. <laughs> we're our worst we're our worst critics. Those one you know, those days, those lazy Sunday afternoons, you think about something that happened ten years ago and you're like, oh yeah. Oh my god! I, know. I still to this Whatever. day have dreams about like failing an exam. Oh, oh my god! god. Like, I'm like when I'm really stressed out. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? I know it's like, and then that pops up from years For ago. Sure. Financial I management, that. I think, was my <laughs> my dream. <laughs> A failure. Oh, yeah. failure. Yeah, yeah. Was, okay, I like, yeah, bye. I was like, don't pa- don't. I was like, you gotta pass this. You gotta pass. Yeah. Like, oh my god, when I'm really stressed out, every once in a while, like uh, every once, like maybe one a year, I'll like I'll get a weird dream. Like, what the hell? I'm like, I don't have any exams to take. Oh like, I'm god. over that I shit. Know. I know. And, unless I want to do a master's, then I'll probably go through that crap again. But I it's know. just a thesis, then, so I think I'll be okay. Yeah, right. It's kind of on your own your own clock. Mm-hmm. For my thing, it's like I talked about this in my other episode with Sarah. It was like the PTSD of like having assignments. I'm just like, oh, for sure. You fall into those little stress moments. You're like, I need to be doing something. I forgot something. Oh my god! But totally. there's nothing, and you're like, "Oh no, I'm just can literally lay here and watch Netflix for another three hours because there's nothing going on." Oh my god, the Netflix I curse. Um, okay, I want to shift to the future. Sure, let's go back to the future. I'm down, darling. Um, do you have a plan? What is next for you? Do you have a pl- Do you have a plan? Do I have a plan? What's your five? No. Year plan? Um, oh what's your What's your five years? But. Do you, what is next for you? Like, how far in advance do you plan things? And do you have a life plan, or do you think that's total crap? Because I know people I always have... ask that, and they're like, do you have a plan? And I think, especially going into university, people always have, like, a plan of where they want their life to be or, like, end up at a certain point or reach. Yeah. Like, do you have that now, like, going forward? I think because of the work I am, I'm in, I am a planner, and I, I like to plan my life to a certain yeah. extent. And ironically enough, I'm just learning this year, like, it's good to have goals, but, like, to be present, to be grateful, to kind of be in the moment, which I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. So with that said, I'm trying to be present every day and not, you know, think too much about certain situations, etc. But I do like to plan a little still. Yeah. So, um, of course. Uh, I think in the next little while, I do like the work that I'm doing right now, but I do mm-hmm. have a couple, I do, um, I'm doing online marketing right now. So I have a side business. Yes. Cause we were going to do a thing on Saturday about it. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So, um, I'll leave that for another little episode, but I'm, I do a little bit of online oh, what, marketing. You think you're getting another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, girl. I'm already signing myself up. <laughs> I already got keys to the studio, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so I I have that side project that I want to put into motion in the next in the next little while. But I do love the work that I'm doing right now, so yeah. that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I also um, I really I've always had a passion for real estate, yeah. so I'm investing in real estate in the next year. So I'm super Ooh, excited about that. That's exciting. So my ideal would be I would say five years. Um, transition into working in from my online marketing. So you do have a five year plan. Yeah. Good to so, know. <laughs> so I would say like in the next couple of years, mm-hmm. maybe transition, I don't know if it's in three or four transitioning to working for myself, doing the online marketing thing. I love that. And then also doing a uh, real estate investment at mm-hmm. the same time. Okay. I would love to like, you know, have a property here in Vancouver. Yeah. I really want to be like, um, hey. spot, you know what so I mean? So I love how you're like. Yeah, I just, like, live in the moment and plan a little bit. Here it <laughs> fucking is every minute, every step-by-step oh step plan. But, no, I think that's good. Like, I mean, good for – I'm so happy for you. That's so exciting. I love that – that sounds amazing. I And you know Fuck, what? Yes, to hear I want me, that To for hear you. me say it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But also – I'm my worst enemy because you can talk I mean, a big game, yeah, but course. you get scared and yeah. you like, and you you're stick like, with am I worthy? Like, long. am I going to do this? Exactly. Like, am I capable? Or like, or so like, scary. Failure is this. Yep. Failure is that. Like, should I do it? But like, you know what? 
Fuck everyone it. who's like listening, like if you have a passion, get out there and freaking try it out. Do it because you know what? There's no better time than the now, and it's all about timing. Like get out there and try it out. Yeah. Like I'm okay right now in my job that I'm doing, but it's not to say like you know what? You never know what's gonna happen that you have to jump on an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Like put your feelers out there. Do a couple things at the same time while you're still young and you still have the energy to do so. Because mm-hmm. bitch, when you get old, you ain't gonna have that much energy no more. Hell and no, hopefully you're gonna you'll relax be like, in L.A. Exactly. Sketch. Relax in L.A. And maybe and maybe answer phone calls. Maybe not. Yeah, That's you'll you'll see. Feel. You'll see. I'm yeah. like I'm like no no no. I was like delete block whatever. Delete block. Oh yeah. sorry. Only you're gonna have a landline. You're only gonna have a landline. Oh could you just imagine? Yeah. I'm like Beatrice. Obviously, she'll be my assistant. Yeah. I'm like Beatrice. <laughs> I'm like you know. I'm like oh my god. Take a message, Beatrice. Some take a message. Some I'm like I'm like seventeen. I, I can't even handle this like you know this kale coconut smoothie right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's too coconutty. I know for it's too sure. Too hairy. Is I that don't kale? like it. I'm like, what is this kale? Green smoothies. Did you put the stalks in the kale in the blender? I'm like, I told you not to do that. Oh, what is this? Oh, Beatrice. Um. Okay. Well, that's kind of like the the serious shit. Yeah. I call these my rapid fire questions. Cool. So let's go into them. Vogue seventy two questions. Let's go. Seventy two minus sixty eight. Here we go. <laughs> Four questions. Rapid. Four questions. There's more than four. Anyway. Um, okay, so let's start out with a good old would you rather. These to me are always earth shattering because I just start picturing, picturing my life in this way and then I, it's really hard to get out of it and choose. Um, anyway, okay, would you rather have a sliver in your finger or a rock in your shoe for the rest of your life? Mm, sliver in my finger. Really? Yeah. See, that's what the most people have said to me when I ask them this, but I think you're not wearing shoes all the time. Okay, when you frame that question, yeah, you frame it in the in the context of like you're wearing your shoes. You said for the rest of your life. What? I'm not wearing shoes for the rest of my life. I'm oh sleeping God. with shoes on. Look at you. See, now you're being tricksy. Yeah. Okay. A little well, bit. Well, I just thought that up. If today, you were actually, a little was more like, tricksy, oh, yeah. Uh, if you were like, uh, if you said, but you don't have to wear your shoes all the time. I'm like, of course, bitch. I'm gonna pick that damn rod. <laughs> I'm like, I will wear thongs my whole life. <laughs> so that yeah, question basically thongs, nullified. Thongs are not shoes. Yeah. They're not shoes. Actually, I. Anyways, I hate those. That's a whole other episode, actually. For I'm sure. dedicate to my disgust. But the only reason why I picked the sliver in your yeah, finger why? Why was no? because, like, if I literally had to wear shoes for the rest of my life and there was a damn rock in there, it would totally <laughs> impede me from walking and doing so much shit. Rather, rather than, like, having a little pinky sliver, I'm like, I could, I could grab shit with both hands still, True. do whatever. Yeah. Like, my mobility and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and I'm like, you know what? Right. I just cut that finger off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lose I got nine fingers. <laughs> what? What? Damn right. Yeah. Um, okay. Good to know. Um, that pinky your... was always getting in the way anyway. <laughs> the pinky. Yeah, I know, especially pinky. at tea. So, <laughs> love it right now. I know, right? People keep thinking I'm pretentious. So I just cut, oh, it, right just cut it right off. <laughs> a pinky act to me. Oh, my God. 100%. Oh my Can you God. imagine having a little nubbin? <laughs> so weird. Oh, my God. Then my nubbin would go up at high tea. It was. Oh, my God. That was so weird. <laughs> I'd, like, get kicked out of the, like, you yeah, know, Fairmont. They'd be like, yeah. no, no, no. Nubbin's not allowed. No, no, And then no, I'd no, go no, and get, like, a prosthetic. Oh my god, could you okay, imagine? Let's stop, let's stop. This is snowballing. This is snowballing, Mike. True god, enough, true it. enough. Um, that's only the first fucking question. There's so many more. <laughs> okay, we only have an hour. Okay. Um, no, I mean like less than that now. Jesus. Um, okay, what's your favorite cuss word? Um favorite swear word. They say this on actors, inside actor studio or whatever. I remember they asked Johnny Depp this and he was like, shit. I don't know my favorite was like, cuss good. word. My favorite swear word. I don't know. I love them all equally. They're all my babies. I don't know. Like, uh... I think you say bitch a lot. Yeah, I would say maybe bitch. Yeah. But like in like a loving term. Like, hey, bitch, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Maybe that. I think I think that would be... Mm, yeah, because I see other whole bunch of sayings that aren't cuss words, though. Yeah, I know. Those are more I like more. a good phrase. I like a good, like, cuss phrase that doesn't include any of the seven words you can't say on television. But that's just, like, creative and interesting. True enough. True so enough. I respect that. I like that. Good answer. Um, what's your best show on Netflix? You were telling me one on the way here. I don't know oh, my best show on Netflix? Or like your fave show. I mean, you were telling me about that. Oh that my God. I, okay, Game I'm like a big shit. movie fanatic and I love movies and I love the okay. series. So I have like so many favorites right now. I know. Well, but, everyone does. TV's uh, on fire. It's so good. What do you um, think? So on Netflix, just on Netflix. Mm, what's on Netflix yeah. right now that I like? I don't um, know. Just in general. I don't know. I said Netflix because it's the only one I know how to use. <laughs> oh my God. You're so funny. Whatever. So like, uh, I think on Netflix, what was my fave? Mm, I don't know. I think really have any on Netflix. It's my fave at the moment, but I do have like a fave one at the moment. 
Um, I'm so in love with The Handmaid's Tale. I just okay. started. I just watched yeah. started the second season right now. Okay. When she would, when Monica was picking me up in her smart car. In my little smart <laughs> car, I was flooring it on the way here. Too. And I was watching the first episode of the second season, which is intense AF. I was basically having a panic. No attack. spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. It's, it was good. So Handmaid's Tale right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good answer. Um, do you have a song in your head right now? Mm. Like music you're listening to. One oh song that you have on repeat. Oh my god, I'm like so tragic right now. Nothing. But like uh Bodak Yellow, Cardi B. Oh Okay, <laughs> I fucking love Cardi B, first know, of all. She's the greatest thing that's happened to social media in a long time. She's so ratchet like, and she's so real. She's so she's real. She's like ridiculous. I love it. Oh my goodness. She's like, yeah, I got my teeth done. What? But, like, th- she's I'm like, like, fuck yeah, Cardi B. Like that's like I grew up on the res and like yeah. some of the girlfriends. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, I'm like Cardi B. Oh. Like you remind me of some cousins. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. I love her. So, okay, great. Um, What is... Do you have a random talent? Something oh randomly really good. I don't know, like hula hooping or like fucking... A random guitar. talent? Guitar. I don't know, guitar is over there. Um, hmm. I don't know. Mine is I'm really good at hula hooping. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <gosh. laughs> <laughs> You'll have to, that's another episode yes. as well. I, I guess I have like a snowball. I have so many more episodes to film after this one with Micah. I think okay, random best. talent. What, what would I say yeah. would be a random talent that I have? I don't know. You don't have to have any. Some people don't. And that's hmm. fine too. I'm a not going to kick you out if you don't. I don't care. You're not going to be less special. But I'm really good at hula hooping. I, I, I only asked that question just so I could tell everyone who's sure listening that. that I'm really good at hula hooping. Basically, she's promoting yeah. herself right here. Yeah. What do you think this is? Hmm. It's all about me. Um, yeah, I don't think I have a I'm random gonna, talent. No, I'm not too sure. Nothing that comes off the top of my head. You're just kind of good at everything. Oh, because so you they're not random. Hardly. I wish I was are. though. Um. Okay. So top or bottom bunk. <laughs> um. We'll say. We'll say. Hmm. hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I put that one up last night. I <laughs> myself. I love it. Uh. We'll say, um, I haven't decided. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question mark. I like it. Um, co- iced coffee or frappuccino? Ooh. Now here's the zinger. Uh, I don't drink coffee. I don't drink caffeine okay. at all. I know, but like, would you have so a frap then? Would you have a frap? No. Do you enter Starbucks ever? Never. Okay. Cool. But I've had had one and they're like, it seems like it tastes okay. Okay. But like the that myth that it's like a Big Mac just totally turns me off the calories yeah, that's in it. Weird. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. Health wise, fuck no. I don't drink any of that shit either. Um, I do go to Starbucks though. Sometimes to just even walk in the door because I'm bored and I want to leave work. But anyway, um, New York or L A. Oh God, I always thought I would love New York way more than L A. But I feel like now I'm loving L A. more than New York mm, at the moment. Okay. But I feel like last time I went to New York. I like went there in the summer in the dead heat of summer. And oh my it was like, god! It was plus forty, and I got a cold for the first week. So I was light. I was like laid up in a fucking brownstone in the Upper East Side by oh. myself. Were you with Kyle? No, he wasn't there oh, yet. Oh, okay, okay. And I was in there for four or five days in this brownstone by myself, like oh dying, god. dying. And then I finally like my friends came in and like you know, oh, saved me from life. And but I was like so hot there, so I felt like I didn't give New York a really good go. Okay. So I want to go back. But right now, I will say L.A. L.A. is kind of okay. like my spot right now. Yeah. I definitely want to, like, have a house there. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't blame you. Same. It's a good spot. Um, as long as I can come visit, that's uh, fine. Obviously. Okay. Inner circle only. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> okay. And so everyone who's could... listening to this, too. And everyone. <laughs> everyone. Um, so there's... So you and I. Yeah. <laughs> and Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> right? Fucking me, Wait. bitch. Me listening to myself yeah, well, in my room. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, final question of the day. Give young Micah a piece of advice. Give young Micah a piece of advice. Mm. Honestly, I would say don't care so much what other people think and just kind of follow your own passion, follow your own heart. I feel that you pay way too much attention to outside situations where you can just focus on yourself and just follow your own path because everything will fall into place. So just trust yourself. That's the most perfect way to end this podcast. Namaste. Namaste. (laughs) Take your time leaving the room, everybody. 100%. Now relax. Exhale. And exhale. (laughs) (sighs) Micah Fox, thank you so much for doing this with me. 
recording me <laughs> and you recording with me. <laughs> Fuck my life. I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm so out of it. Thank you so much for recording with me. This has meant so much to me and I love hearing your story and sharing all the beautiful moments that we've had together so far in our lives and all the food we've had and now we've recorded your life story and it's <laughs> eternal. And it's, 100%. Yeah. And it's going to be always in my heart Aww. and on the airwaves. Thank you. And well, thank you so much for having so me. You're so special. Yeah. I you're so special. It. And I just, I'm so excited that I got to frame you and just have your life story and share it with as many people as possible. So for thank sure. you. No, thank you for the opportunity to come over here and kind of like, you know what? Just like sit on a big comfy couch, just chill out. Yeah, that Kenny have... slept on multiple times. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and just have a really open conversation about like, you know what? Like, you know, your life and yeah. school and what happens after school and what yeah. your future endeavors are. And you know what? Mm. What's your crazy quirkiness? This, this, and that. So just getting to know each other. And I feel like, you know what? It's um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story Anytime. and just to kind of be a part of it. Anytime. There will be many follow up episodes. Oh, for sure. We're going to we have a series. Planted the seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Monica Micah. Yeah. There series. you go. Eminem. Eminem. <laughs> oh my God. Melt in your mouth. No. Oh! <laughs> We'll leave that alone. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. We're done. We're done recording. That's all. Check two, one, two. Uh. Kill, kill, kill.